what is going on ladies and gentlemen t to the m to the idd and you know this time i got another video for you i've been getting asked a lot how do i extend my backdrops because inside of my studio you can see that i use smaller seamless savage backdrops and so the finished product you don't see the empty space from the behind the scenes video so i want to know how i get that finished product so i'm going to show you how i do it let's get right into photoshop so of course what you want to do first is go ahead and drag in your file now the important thing about having that file is please if you have it use a raw file if you have a raw file use your raw file because a raw file is so much bigger than the jpeg which means that it has a better dynamic range with the changes that you can make in the file so when it comes to cleaning up your file this will be a big help so if you have a raw file use a raw file if you don't shoot raw start shooting raw okay and as you know in photoshop you bring it up you can do some quick adjustments so i'll make these quick changes rotate um, since this isn't a full in-depth tutorial I won't do too many things I know some things that I like to do immediately I like my photos vibrant a little pop of saturation um, and I can see a little bit of shadows I will want to pop up and the exposure and I'll keep it like that short and sweet and I will actually open this okay so now we have our file open the next thing that i'm going to do this is my workflow i know that most of my images are going on to instagram so i'm going to hit Control plus and that'll allow me to zoom in and hold the space bar and drag down on the mouse and the first thing i'm going to do is change my sizing so you can see on my screen it is four by five which is typically what i actually export to so that it can go onto instagram without any problem so we're going to go to four by five and i'm going to drag this down Control minus so that i can see the whole screen again and what i try to do is you have a rule of thirds so i always like to have my model in the middle of the actual image so this is lining up pretty well for me so i'm actually happy with this setup so i have her full body in the image as well so i'm i'm actually happy with how this is and so this actually cuts out some of the work that i have to do with extending um so i don't have to worry about the top here because once I cropped it out, it's fully, it's fully there. And so I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Now you can see I have a mark on this right hand side uh, from a previous, uh, I guess, mishap with my Savage Seamless Paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and there's several tools that you can uh, use to take care of this um, what I'll use is this particular stamp and I'll increase this and I'll lower the hardness and let's see actually let's go ahead and we're going to hit this rectangular mark tool and what i'm going to do is try to grab the outermost edge and when i grab that outermost edge i am going to select all the way down so i have a clear path all the way down and then i'm going to hit Control j and then Control t and that will allow me to grab this edge and stretch it all the way over okay 
that same seamless right there I like how that how that looks now on the other side is going to be a little raunchy so if you have a smooth uh, backdrop unlike mine's is going to come out uh, you won't have to do too much extra editing to get it uh, smoothed out but in my case I don't have that so I'm gonna to have to do a little extra work so let's merge these layers down and yeah okay so now we're gonna go on this side and I can see I actually have kind of a smooth edge but just in case let's let's just try to make it smooth I'm gonna take this stamp tool and I'm gonna get as close as possible let's increase this a little bit and I'll show you a little bit more okay I'm actually let's go underneath and this is this is actually good let's let's leave it right there that's that's good enough for me to do what I need to do so we're going control minus and back out and then we're gonna go back to the selection tool and we're gonna try to grab that outermost edge again on this side and just to make sure I got the outermost edge and not the outside to couple uh, keystrokes inside um, control J control T then we're gonna take that edge and we are going to stretch it again and there you have the stretch or extended backdrop to make your photo look full now i'm going to do a few extra steps that i typically do um, just to clean some things up that may be helpful for you as well so you can see that this image has some effects on the right hand side so let's go ahead and merge these layers one thing that i normally try to do is i like to use a layer so i'm going to add a layer here and it's going to be black and white black and white reveals a lot of blending that needs to happen so for example right here you can see it's lighter here and darker here now normally i create extra layers to do this so that i can always go back to a previous one um, so here i actually let's create another one okay and so right here this is the beautiful thing right click here and go to the mixer brush i, I love the mixer brush so the mixer brush you can see my wetness the load and the mix and since this line is horizontal, what I would do is go perpendicular to actually blend it. So let's actually blend it. I'm gonna go up and down, up and down. Okay, I like that. Up and down, up and down. And we're gonna do the same thing. You know, let's, let's just go back the other way. Okay, pretty, pretty good blend, pretty good blend. So that is one way that you can do it now let me let me actually go back this photo actually doesn't look bad in black and white as well so that's one way you could do it one tip that i will say when i'm in my studio i normally almost exclusively shoot with my 70 to 200 lens because another tip that you can actually do to clean up is you can actually use a little bit of gaussian blur so you can actually take this background, add a little Gaussian blur to it, and it'll smooth out any, any imperfections as well. So that's another tip. The reason why I use the 70 to 200 is because it packs in compression, which already does it for you. So that's a nice tip. So let's go ahead and I'm going to delete this layer. Okay. Now, another tip 
that's actually even I, I think it's a little bit more impactful than the black and white so we're gonna add this curves layer and it's kind of like a sinusoidal curve adjustment but let's let's just take a look and see how this actually works so we have here we're gonna grab here yep we'll grab here grab here mm -hmm. and we want to try to keep this pattern going so let's try to so we're gonna keep going up and down up and down and so this is kind of like a a sinusoidal wave in a sense you get you get a sense of what's going on here and this actually becomes a benefit when you are doing print work and and anything that is going to be blown up where you know if, if it's at this level you probably won't see many imperfections but when you get to the point of it being blown up on a big sign for example I did a sign a headshot for a campaign and it was blown up because you know you have to be able to visually see and so at that point that's when those imperfections start to become extremely visible okay so I actually think I actually think that's enough. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna move this over. Distribute it just 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 a little bit. Okay. Actually, do need that light. Okay, about right there. So I know this looks pretty crazy, right? But trust me, this is the benefit to doing this as well. Now, I showed you one way with black and white; it actually identifies imperfections. But this does as well, and it's as simple as adjusting this this uh, curve like this so the benefit let's zoom in and you see how it identifies these flyaways here there's no mistake that this is a flyaway so then at that point you can actually grab and let's see you can actually grab your stamp tool and you take a small selection and you can clean it up. So let's go to, and, and all along here, you can see fly away, fly away, fly away. That is all her hair flyaways. Now let's go up a little bit more. You can see flyaways here. So you will actually be able to clean this up as well. And that is important because once that is blown up you will actually be able to see that a lot more clearly rather than if you were on instagram you wouldn't be able to see it as clearly so if you plan on blowing that image up or you just want your work to look clean this is some a technique that is pretty nice to use so again you can see these flyaways with the hair flyaways here and these flyaways up here pretty clearly can't miss them. so that's why I actually like using this as well um, also uniformity so you can see the colors in the backdrop 
Now here, they don't blend as uniform because that is where we actually had the mishap with the backdrop. And so you would actually use this and you can actually clean it up a little bit more. So that is a second tip that I have for you all. Now, I don't have this particular photo shoot uh, behind the scenes I do have the footage so let me know in the comments if you would like to see this because that is something that I can do now I hope that this helped you all we got to the key thing which was how I extend my backdrops and I actually added two more things on how I actually clean up the backdrop so that is how I do it if you have any knowledge you share drop it in the comments if you want to see this behind the scenes drop that in the comments as well T to the M to the IDD peace